Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to our online service. We are so happy that you have decided to join us this morning. You will not regret it. And hey, if you are checking us out for the first time or maybe the second time and you have not had a chance to do so yet, there is a link that you'll see below down in your comment section. Click that, that's gonna take you to our guest information page and we would just love it if you would put all your info on there. Not because we wanna sell your information, but because we want to reach out and connect with you, say hi and invite you to meet us someday in real life, hopefully very, very soon. So do that before you sign off this morning. And as always, I just have a few announcements before we take communion together and Pastor Tim brings us the message. And today, don't forget, I mean, shoot, it's January 24th already. Time flies when you are having fun and February is gonna be here before we know it. So don't forget the XO date night. If you want to join us live, there's a link below in the comment section that you can click there. That is gonna take place on February February 12th, Friday evening, and February 13th, Saturday morning here at Lamb of God Fellowship. If you're not comfortable yet leaving your house, there is an opportunity for you to join the Marriage Today official conference online. So if you click the link that you'll see that will take you to the online marriage conference, click that, sign up, you and your hubby can, or your wife, I guess, <laughs> can stay at home and enjoy the conference and just enrich your marriage and just get closer together and have some tools to equip you guys for what life has for us in a marriage. Because we all know it's not the easiest thing, but it's one of the most rewarding things in our lives. So click that, whether you want to join us live or online, go ahead and do that. And don't forget to sign up before the end of January, because then you can get the early bird special. The only other announcement I have this morning is the youth group here at Lamb of God Fellowship is hosting a Super Bowl party on Super Bowl Sunday. That is Sunday, February 7th. The party starts at 6 p.m. so that you can be here and ready to go for kickoff at 6.30. So if you're a youth age 6th grade through 12th grade and you want to come out for that, they'll be here. Come on out and bring a friend. All right, guys, um, before we take communion together, as always, I just want to encourage you with God's word. So if you don't have your communion elements, go grab something real quick. Um, again, like I say so often, it doesn't really matter what the elements you have at home, even if it's a donut and a cup of coffee. It just matters the position of your heart as you take communion, because this is a very powerful time that we have the privilege to do week after week. So go grab something real quick while I read from you Romans. 13 verse 1 and this is from the NIV and this is something that I feel is very powerful right now in our country with everything that's been going on politically and how we just um, have a, we have a new president now and I want you to remember from Romans 13 1 everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities for there is no authority except for which God has established the authorities that exist have been established by God. And don't forget what it says in Proverbs about how many are ways, or many are the ways in a man's heart, but it is God's way that will prevail. So don't worry. Don't worry about what's gonna bring, what's gonna come tomorrow. God is in control. He always has been, and he has set up these authorities, and we are to submit to them and be respectful. So before you post that next hateful thing on Facebook or on your social media page, just stop and remember to post something encouraging and that God loves you and he loves that power, that person and authority as well. So let's pray for them instead and let's encourage one another and unite together rather than be a part of the division and the discord that is so prevalent right now in social media. And as we tap into communion and the power of what it holds for us this morning, let's remember that, that Jesus came and he lived a sinless life so that he could be the perfect sacrifice and take on every sin, every curse of every person that would ever come in this world. And let's celebrate that this morning as we take communion and know that he is still in control, he is still on the throne and his ways will prevail. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much that we can just trust you. We can relax. We don't have to get overwhelmed. We don't have to get worked up. We don't have to worry. We don't have to get in fights with each other or other people that we may not even know, Lord. We can just rest knowing that you are in control and your ways will prevail, God. We thank you for your authority and that you are sovereign over all and that we can trust in you in everything. And we thank you, Jesus, for stepping down off your throne to humble yourself and to give your life up as a ransom for men 
many. So Lord, we take that and we celebrate it today as we take communion, this, this bread that represents your body that was bruised and broken so that ours could be made whole and the blood that was shed, Lord, that this juice represents so that our chains could be broken and they could fall to our feet and we could dance upon them once and for all, never to be put back on us ever again, Lord. So let us step into that freedom, step into that peace that you fought and bled for. I thank you and I celebrate with you today and I claim it, I proclaim it, and I love you in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, enjoy Pastor Tim's message. It's another awesome one, and I hope to see you very, very soon. Have a great week. Good morning, Lamb of God family and friends. This is Pastor Tim. Just so excited to be able to spend some time with you again today, and thank you for the honor of tuning in and uh, just feeding on God's word with us together. Just a couple things before I get, get into our message today. Number one, we are meeting in person as a church. Just want to let you know about that. If you ever are ready to come back into uh, the personal contact with people in, in our worship services, we only have one service right now on Sundays, and it's at 10 a.m. And then also, I uh, want to uh, invite you, if you are interested in getting water baptized, we are going to do some water baptisms on February 7th here during our morning service. And if you're interested, we're asking that you sign up either through our app or you can come into the church and sign up or give us a call and let us know because we do have a class. I'd like to have you come to a class on January 31st um, after our service, it'll be at noon. We'll have a light lunch. And I, I'd just like to share with you just what does water baptism really mean and what is it all about? and kind of walk us through that preparation time together. So on February 7th, during the service, when you're baptized, you know, you, you're just really able to just soak it all in, you know, pun intended. But uh, anyway, we're really excited about the people who are growing in their faith and those who have uh, made Jesus the Lord of their life in these last several months. And we want to give them a chance to make that public declaration as they uh, just figuratively speaking, you know, die to themselves and in the, in the watery grave and rise brand new creations in Christ Jesus. So we're going to celebrate that with them. And maybe that's you. So let us know if that's you and we'll celebrate with you and get you all set. Okay. Well, we are in a series right now uh, called um, Join the Journey. And what I'm doing is uh, I'm inviting everybody to just get recommitted and refired up for the purpose that God has for our lives as a Lamb of God fellowship. And as I've mentioned before in recent days, this year is our 40th anniversary. And 40 represents a generation. And so I'm inviting this next generation. You may be in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, like me, or 60s or 70s, doesn't matter. If you're still alive, we're turning a corner. And I'm just saying, let's recommit to the vision that God has for us this year. And as part of that journey, we're going to celebrate together uh, in the fall, our 40th anniversary. We're going to have a giant reunion and just call people to gather together to celebrate what God has done. But also, we are actually rebranding our church. We're going to be announcing a new name on Easter Sunday, April 4th this year. And we're just trying to do even better at reaching more people for God as we seek to know Him and make Him known. So what I'm doing at the outset of this uh, year is just going through some of the core values that we believe in, that, that is just absolutely non-negotiables for us as followers of Jesus Christ and what God has called us to do. And so a uh, quick review, so far I've done two and there's five that I want to go through in this series. The first one I did was scripture. God's word is paramount to our success and we believe in God's word and I preach God's word as best I can. I study it, we study it, we learn it and we try to live it. So our phrase is we want to learn and live the truth because the truth sets us free and the word of God blesses us. And I've been challenging people to do this uh, life journal together with me and it's just a tool to help us memorize one verse a week. And we have some copies here at the church if you'd like to stop by and pick one up. I've been doing it. It is really helping me stay focused and uh, disciplined to memorize God's word and treasure that inside of me. But it, it needs to then also be lived out, right? So we're learning and living the word of God, the truth, okay? That's what we want to do. So this week's um, scripture in the journal, if you've been doing it, is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. So here we go. I'm going to give it a shot. You ready? <laughs> All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, 
correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God, the woman of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So may you continue to study and li live out God's word so you are equipped for everything that God's called you to do and you're effective in the life that God's called you to live. All right, the second principle or core value that we talked about last week was excellence. Excellence, I love excellence, but the reason why excellence is a core value here at the Lamb of God family and in my life is because everything we do is worship. Everything we do is worship. This is the verse I shared with you last week out of Colossians chapter 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, whatever it is, anything and everything, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive a reward or an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. And then the scripture says, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So no matter what we do, we are serving God. We are worshiping God with whatever it is, whatever responsibilities we have, whatever we do, uh, it's to be done in worship. That's why excellence matters. And so Christians should be known for their amazing work ethic, positive attitudes, integrity, and creativity because everything we do is worship to God. We're not just doing it for ourselves or for money or for a boss or a company or for attention. We're not trying to impress anybody. We are honoring and worshiping God. So excellence matters and you should be pursuing excellence in everything you do because it's worship to God. We honor God with excellence and we inspire people to him. All right. And now today I want to talk about our third core value. And these are not in any particular order. They're just all important to us. And it is the word charismatic. And the phrase that I want to put with this one is filled, spirit filled, and spirit directed. We are living spirit filled and spirit directed lives. So uh, today, I'm not going to give you any uh, Hebrew, but I am going to talk about this Greek word where this word charisma comes from. Okay. So charisma comes from the Greek word charis, and it means favor or grace. Okay. So if you have, if your name is Chris or Christina or Christine or Carissa, there's a lot of different variations. Your name finds its root in this word charis, and it means favor and grace. So you have charisma. You are charisma. All right. That's, that's part of your name. Now, here's some of the definitions I looked up in the biblical definitions, okay? Number one, a favor with which one receives without any merit of his own. That's what grace is. Number two, the gift of divine grace. Number three, the gift of faith, knowledge, holiness, virtue. Number four, there's five definitions here. Number four, the economy of divine grace by which the pardon of sin and eternal salvation is appointed to sinners in consideration of the merits of Christ laid hold of by faith. In other words, the gift of salvation is grace. That is charis, charisma, the gift of God's salvation to us sinners as we place our faith in Jesus. And then fifthly, and the one I, I'm probably going to focus on here, is grace or gifts denoting extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians and enabling them to serve the church of Christ, the reception of which is due to the power of divine grace operating on their souls by the Holy Spirit. So some of you are old enough to remember this, but in the 1970s, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like this last definition, these extraordinary powers, especially that of speaking in tongues, emerged all across our nation and our world. And as a result, it was called the charismatic movement because it took its definition from the word charisma, okay, which I just gave you that definition. And so the word charismatic, uh, really referring to the Greek word found in the New Testament, is used to describe these gifts or the outpouring of these gifts or the manifestation of these, these gifts, okay? Now, um, the word in the Bible in the New Testament is used 17 different times uh, in Greek. And I want to read three of those scriptures for you. The first one, 1 Corinthians 7, 7. I wish, Paul is talking, I wish that all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift. That's the word charisma. Each of you have your own charisma from God. One has this charisma, this gift. Another has that gift or that charisma. So the word gift is the word charisma here. And note, we all have a gift. We all have charisma. 
right? If you're watching this with somebody, turn to them and say, I have charisma. <laughs> Even if you're not an outgoing person, that's not what, you know, we're talking about here. We're talking about the gifts of God in us. And the Bible says we all have a gift from God, okay? 1 Corinthians 12, 4 is the, is the second reference I want to make. It says there are different kinds of gifts. Again, let me read the Greek part here. There are different kinds of charisma or charismatic Okay, but the same spirit distributes them. And in this verse, we learn that these gifts, this charisma comes from the spirit of God. Okay, it comes directly from the Holy Spirit. Third verse I want to read for you. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift, whatever charisma you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace or God's charisma in various forms. And in this verse, we learn that not only do we all have charisma or gift, and not only do those gifts come from the Holy Spirit, not from ourselves, but thirdly, the purpose for this charisma or this gift is to serve one another. Isn't that beautiful? God puts gifts in us to give to others, to encourage, build up, strengthen, correct, teach, motivate, spur on one another, to heal, to give words of wisdom and knowledge, and to prophecy and healing and miracles for one another. It comes from God to us for others. So that's really what I mean when I'm talking about our church is charismatic. We are filled with the Spirit of God and we are directed by the Spirit of God, okay? And all of that work isn't just for us personally, but for those around us to be blessed because God wants to get to people, right? And he uses people to help people. It's pretty awesome how God does it. So charisma is the grace of God in us for others. Keep it simple. Charisma is the grace of God, the gifts of God by his spirit in us for others. Okay. So here's a couple of verses I want to share with you. Ultimately for me, that gift of God that's in us is the Holy Spirit. So Acts chapter two, verse 17 the prophet says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, on all people. So we get, all of us get to be included in this, okay? And then Peter stands up in Acts chapter 2, 38 to a crowd and he says to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we receive all the gifts because now the gifts come from the Spirit, right? So once the Holy Spirit is in us, then the Holy Spirit will use any gifts at any time to meet any needs that he sees fit to. Isn't that awesome? So we get the gift. And when the gift is living in us, the Holy Spirit, we have all the gifts from him whenever he decides to distribute those. That's what I'm talking about. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are charismatic, okay? Goes on to say, uh, Paul, or Peter says, the promise, this promise of being filled with the Holy Spirit is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And uh, that's me, that's you. That's us today, the church today. So Jesus said this in John 14 about the Holy Spirit, verses 16 to 17. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it doesn't see him, doesn't know him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So he says, the spirit that I'm going to send, the Holy Spirit that's going to come from the Father, that I'm going to ask him to send to you is going to live with and in you, okay? And in Acts chapter two, verse four, we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Jesus was talking to his disciples about. It says all of them in verse four, all of them, the believers, were filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And then Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians six nineteen. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Do you see? We know this as a church, but this is really important. Holy Spirit is in us. And because he's in us, all of the gifts of God can flow through us, through him, in us to other people. 
This is the life that's worth living right here. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about a real life in God. And the Holy Spirit is in us functioning all the gifts and releasing whenever he determines through us for the benefit of other people. That's what I mean by spirit filled and spirit directed. Now, for me, I want to kind of go into like a little bit of a soapbox uh, uh, issue for me. OK, because the real core value of being charismatic is whether we are focused on performing a religion or we are walking in a relationship with God. This is probably one of the most profound shifts that you can make in your life is to shift your understanding of God from religion and duty and obligation to intimate knowledge and relationship. Okay, so when I really think about we're charismatic, I, I think about this fact that we believe that God is with us, not out there somewhere, that God is living in us, that we have communion with him and he's moving dynamically in our lives day by day, moment by moment. And we're not trying to find God or seek God who's, who's so far off that we always feel we're on our own and it's our job to get to God. But charismatic means, no, no, God is with me. He's in me. Anything's possible right now because he's with me, he's in me, all right? So we are real people who have a real faith in a real God who empowers us to live a real life. That's who we are. That's who we are. That's what I mean by being charismatic. So all of that to say, the verse of this message, the verse of the week for this message is Jesus saying this sort of thing. John chapter five, verses 39 to 40. He is talking to a group of religious people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and the religious people of the day, the very, very strong religious people. Okay. And he says this to them. He says, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. Let me just pause here before I read the next verse. He's saying you are studying the scriptures. You're doing all of this hard work, all this religious duty. And you're looking at the scriptures. You're studying them because you think that by doing this religious activity, by doing this particular thing, that you will have eternal life. Okay. And, and so it's religion to them. They are, they're doing, they are doing the work and they are seeking God and they are trying to, uh, to get to God. Now, the motive is fine. It's great. But this is what Jesus says to them. He says, these are the scriptures that testify about me, about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Now, I just started this you know, message out and this series out by talking about the importance of scripture. I just told you about how important it is for us to memorize scripture. I just gave you a verse to memorize right here, right? So like, so pastor, are you, are you contradicting what you're saying? No, I'm not, because we are not doing a religious activity to study the scriptures, to earn something for God. Yet what we are doing is we are recognizing that this is all about who? Jesus. And we're using this tool to connect in a personal relationship with Jesus. And what Jesus was saying to this crowd was, you're doing religious activity, but that's the end to your means of getting yourself self-righteousness. And you're missing God. You're missing the relationship. And that's a lot of what is going on in our world today. People feel obligated to come to church, to give, to serve. We're trying to do all the right things. We're trying to not do the wrong things. And we're serving a religion and we can be disconnected from God. Because the whole point of going to church or serving or giving or reading your Bible, the whole point of all of that stuff is to actually experience God, to know him, right? To have a relationship with him. And so that's what I want to talk about with you today is just as the religious people of Jesus's day viewed righteousness as something to be earned through, you know, personal piety or obedience or their effort. So today, many people take it on themselves to try to please God when in fact, Jesus came to give us himself, not a religion. He came to give himself 
This is a passion of mine. This is a core value of this church. We are charismatic. We are filled with God. God isn't out there somewhere, way out there where we got to beg and, and uh, holler and hope that he hears us. He's with us. He's in us. We're in union with him. We are one with him, you see. And so this is a passion of our church. We're not religious people trying to do religious observances through human effort. It's not what we're doing. You know, we are children of God in relationship with him, right? We are filled with his presence and we are flowing in his will as he directs us. And so um, Jesus is, and I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, the word for the scriptures that's translated poorly as law is Torah. And when we break Torah down, if you remember this quick teaching, the, the pictures of Torah mean to the cross is nailed the prince behold him. In other words, all of the scriptures, as Jesus said, are written about him and so that we would know him. Not so we'd have a religion of laws and rules and do's and don'ts, but so that we would know the character of God. We would experience his presence in our lives and his truth would set us free. So the bullseye of our faith is not religion. It is a person. It is Jesus. It is the one that we are called to behold. The one who is on the cross paying for our sins. The one who is healing us through the stripes he bore on his back. The one who has given us eternal life when he rose from the dead as the first fruits of all those who would follow in his footsteps, right? That's the bullseye of our faith. It's a person. This is about a relationship. And that's all about charismatic to me. We're alive in him. We are filled with him. We are seeking him. And so I want to just share a couple more points here about the difference between what I see religion and relationship looking like. The first is that the difference between living a religion to please God and living a relationship with God is everything. It's, it's, that difference is completely different. And when we are living a spirit-filled and spirit-directed life, it implies, number one, that I am completely forgiven of my sin and made righteous through Jesus, right? Because the reason why is the Holy Spirit or the presence of God has filled me. And if God's presence has filled me, that confirms that I really am forgiven of my sin. Now, here's what religion does though, okay? Religion focuses on sin. But our relationship focuses on our, the Son or Jesus or our Savior, all right? When we are focused on our sin, we, we are doubting the fact that we're forgiven and we think it's on our, uh, you know, our responsibility to clean our act up. And that's, that's religion. Now, I'm not saying those things don't matter. I'm saying that God is our source of cleaning us up. So we focus on the love of God and Jesus's relationship with us and he defeats the sin in our life. There's a totally different focus. All right, so the first point is, when I say I'm spirit-filled and spirit-directed, I'm saying the, that the Holy Spirit lives inside of me and that confirms I really am forgiven. I can get my eyes off my sin and my failure and get my eyes on Jesus and the love that God has for me. So I am secure and I am empowered to now love other people. Okay, the second point I want to make is I am a carrier of the presence of God on the earth. That's what it means to be spirit-filled and spirit-directed. I literally am uh, the temple, right, of the Holy Spirit. The presence of God is here, not out there. And I'm not alone. I'm not trying to rely on myself. Uh, but God in me, God in you, flowing through you, throwing, flowing through me, right? So religion, its focus is on self-reliance, self-reliance. I got to figure this out. I got to do the right thing. I can't do that. What do I do with this? And we, we put all the pressure on ourselves and it's self-reliance. But relationship is spirit reliance. It's actually relying on God, trusting in God. Hey, God, you're with me. Uh, what do we do now? Uh, instead of striving in our own effort and in our own, in our own uh, limitations, right? The third point I want to make is when, when I say I'm spirit filled and spirit directed, what I'm saying is I'm not trying to please or impress God anymore. Okay, man, what a burden can be taken off. Instead, I'm trying to release God. I'm not trying to please God. I'm trying to release God. Why? Because through Jesus, 
I'm already pleasing to God. Religion is always worried about trying to impress God, trying to please God, trying to, you know, close the gap between us and God because God's out there and I'm here and I got to do something to get there. That's religion, right? Religion is trying to impress and it's all about me. Do you like what I did? Did I do a good job? Did you see that? Right? That's religion. Okay? Relationship is about inspiring other people. What I mean by inspiring other people is getting God from here into them. Inspiration. God, the spirit, in spirit, sharing the spirit, sharing the life of God with other people. That's, that's relationship. That's who we are. That's who we are. I'm so proud of this church because we, we're getting that. We, we're living this. We are, we are looking out. We're not looking in. We're not striving in our own flesh. We're trusting in the Lord. And God is doing great things. And I, I'm just so proud of our church. And I'm proud of you. Just continue to let God renew your thinking in these areas, though. So we are super free to love and give and serve because we have been set free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. It's something to celebrate. That we have a church that is alive and filled with the Holy Spirit and directed by the Holy Spirit. It's awesome. Here's a little bit of a, a recap, though, on religion, okay? Most Christians have a disconnect with God. They believe that God is out there somewhere, way off in the sky, and then I'm here, right? And I'm trying to call out to God, pray out to God, please God. I'm doing the best I can, right? We feel pressure to do all the right things, to avoid doing all the wrong things, we're constantly reminded that we're not good enough because we see our failures. We come to church, we give, we serve, but we have this nagging feeling, you know, that it's just not enough. It's just not enough. Our focus is typically on ourselves and our own failures, our problems and our shortcomings, right? That's religion. That's religion. This is what uh, Paul writes in Romans 7, 6. But now by dying to once to what once bound us, he's talking about the law, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. We are not to be living a religious life. We are to be li living a life in the spirit. And when we follow the spirit of God, he takes care of the law because he writes the law on our hearts. That's so, that's so awesome. We have moved from a religion to a relationship, okay? And here's what a relationship looks like. Look at the difference. Let's just listen to this. We have a strong personal connection with God. God's not out there somewhere. God's right here in me, with me. God isn't, um, you know, hard to, to, like, we don't have to beg God to forgive me, to hear me, to answer me. We don't have to do that. Why? Because he's with us. And I'm focused on doing what he's prompting me to do. We're focused on what he's saying to us, right? Because he's with us. I'm not asking God to bless my plans, but I'm seeking to be blessed by following God's plans for my day, right? I'm constantly reminded that God is good enough in me. Jesus has made me good enough in God's sight, but it's Jesus in me. My focus is on my relationship with God and how much he loves me. You know, there's a lot of dead religion, you know, being peddled in our world. But there is an alternative, right? And, and that alternative is an alive God in you, with you, flowing through you. So join the journey and let the Holy Spirit rule and reign in your life. That's what Jesus said. If anyone is thirsty, this is John chapter 7, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Paul says in Ephesians 5.18, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in the fruit of the Spirit. We believe in the power of the Spirit. And we believe that the Holy Spirit is in us, flowing through us, as we allow him to direct us. And it is not Christians that change the world. It is Christ in Christians who change the world. It is Christ who is the hope 
of glory. We don't need to be good religious Christians. We need to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit rule and reign in us and through us because the world doesn't need a better Tim. The world needs Christ in Tim, coming out of him. Can I get an amen from somebody? That's God's plan for your life, to partner with you, to make a difference that matters for eternity. It's so awesome. I got a couple of reflection questions for you to think about as we come close to the end of this message, okay? Just think about these questions. Number one, are you living within your abilities or are you living with the awareness that anything is possible in God? You see the difference? Number two, are you asking God to bless your day or are you seeking God to order your day? Who's in charge of your day? Are you spirit directed? Do you first try to figure things out on your own or do you tell God, hey, God, you've got a problem? That's the difference between religion and what I'm talking about being charismatic, right? Living with the Spirit's help. Are you focused on your fixing your sin or are you focused on how loved you are by God? Are you focused on yourself or are you focused on others and how God wants to use you to be a blessing to other people? Are you living the majority of your life under stress or under peace or in peace, I should say? Are you frustrated or are you seeing a fruitfulness in your life? Really, the difference between these bookends of these questions is are you depending on yourself or are you trusting in the spirit to lead and guide you in your daily life with him? If you're not feeling good enough, if you're not filled with love and joy, if you're not if you're feeling constant pressure to be better, if you are sensing that God is far away from you, if you feel that you're under condemnation, here's the deal. You have a religion problem, not a God problem. That's a religion problem. Because when you live by the Spirit, we know what it looks like. The Bible says here's the fruits of living by the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So when we're living stressed or condemned or, uh, you know, depressed and we're, we're struggling and we're frustrated and all that, it's not coming from the Holy Spirit. It's most likely coming from a faulty understanding of our faith and it's more of a religious mindset. So I pray that God will begin to open your eyes to see how much he loves you and how he wants to live in you and with you and bear the burdens of your daily lives and direct our steps so that we can be blessed and we can be a blessing. And so that's my prayer today is that we will experience that uh, in him and through him. And so as a church, we are unashamedly charismatic. We desire to be filled with the spirit of God and directed by the Spirit of God. So my question is, do you want a church filled with man or filled with God? <laughs> and do you want your life filled with yourself or filled with the Spirit, right? Do you want a church directed by man or directed by God? Do you want your life directed by yourself or directed by the Spirit of God? I'm choosing God. Now, I don't choose God all the time, but I'm trying, right? And that's the, that's the idea here. We're learning together on how to walk in reliance upon God, not ourselves. And so today, as we close this message, I want to just lead you in a prayer. And if you've been feeling religion, you've been feeling that, that hurt, that pressure, that frustration uh, in your life, I just want to pray right now for you that God would release you from that and his love would just swallow you up right now, right where you are. And they would, you would just feel that, that, that relationship that you've been longing for. Your soul has been craving. That Jesus said, if you're thirsty, right? If you're hungry, come to me. And, and that's what we're going to do right now. And if you've never given your heart to Jesus before, right now, I want to encourage you to do that. Just surrender your heart to him and he will fill you with what you've been looking for all along. His spirit. He will fill you with his love. He'll fill you with his peace. And so just join me, if you would, right now in this prayer, okay? Let's pray together. Lord, I just thank you that you are for us and not against us. And Jesus, thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to, 
to be with us in life in every situation and that we are not alone. We are never alone. We are always loved and we always have you with us. And we thank you, Lord, for filling us with your grace, with your charisma, with your spirit. Lord, I just pray for everyone who's watching this video right now, for everyone who's felt pressure, who struggled with religion, who struggled with feeling that you're distant or that they're not good enough or they're never going to be good enough. Right now, in Jesus' name, I come to you, Lord, and I pray on their behalf that these lies will be broken off of their life right now in Jesus' name, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will just envelop them, engulf them right now, Lord, with your love and your truth that sets them free from the burden of religion. And may we cross over, Lord, and just change our mind and see you for who you are, a God who is near to us, who is with us, who is for us, and who loves us who has equipped us with everything good for doing your will on the earth. So Holy Spirit, fill us. Every hungry heart, God, right now that's reaching out to you. We, we agree together right now, God, that we want you. We need you. We surrender to you, Jesus. We surrender our lives to you. And we ask that you fill us to overflowing. That there would be, as you said in another place in the scriptures, rivers of living water flowing from within. That we will have more than enough to be able to love other people and touch other people through your spirit in us. In Jesus' name, if you agree, just say amen. Amen. God bless you. I just pray that God's presence is all over you and that you begin to look at your life differently and begin to look at the opportunities God's putting all around you. God is screaming to get out of you to the people around you. Just release his presence, release his love and his goodness this week in all that you do. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom, in his name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Looking forward to seeing you. Keep it up.
Hi, America. Who's up for a game of Brain Drain? The rules to this one are very simple. Use every single part of your brain to get your team to guess the answers to the questions. You're my team! So you've gotta guess the answers. That's your responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Okay, this first question is knowledge-based. So you're going to need to use this part of your brain you use for intense thinking. What is four plus four plus eight plus eight minus 16. You have 10 seconds. Go! Carry the one. Okay, time's up! Here's the answer. Four plus four plus eight plus eight minus 16 is eight! Did you get the answer? Did you get the answer? Huh? Who got it? I'm gonna say you did. Okay, so this is an artistic question. You'll need that creative part of your brain right here. Using the enclosed clay and drawing pad, get your team to guess the following phrase. Okay, I can do this. Go! Do you get it? It's a dime a dozen. A dime, a dozen, a dime, a dozen. That's the phrase that means something is so common, you can pretty much find it anywhere. It's a dime a dozen. We're rich, I tell you. We're rich. Oh. Let's do another one. Oh, this one's a performance card. I like this one. It uses that part of your brain that gives you courage. Right here to act on stage or sing. Here goes. Get your team to guess the following animal. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'll just look silly. In today's story, we'll learn about a boss who put three servants in charge of bags of gold. Will the servants do something with what they're given or waste their opportunity? I'm not going to act like that animal. Stop wondering. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, Chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. When Jesus wanted to share truth with the people that followed him, he often would tell a parable, a story. Here is what the kingdom of heaven will be like. These parables used everyday situations to help people think and understand God's truth for themselves. One day in Jerusalem, Jesus wanted to share a story with his followers. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. There once was a man who created the world's most amazing energy bar. Just one bite and I feel like I could leap tall buildings in a single bound. What is even in these? If I told you, I'd have to leave you stranded on top of Mount Everest. The man did such a good job of selling the energy bars, he soon became wealthy. Then one day, he got on a Zoom call with three of his top employees. Zane, Ren, Murray. Yes, sir. Right here. Murray. Says he's here. I don't hear him. Start your audio, Murray. Oh, hey, just, you know, I was finishing the movie. I've called you together for an important purpose. I'm going offline. You're what? A completely screen free. I'm going to travel the world for a while. Hike Everest, cross the Sahara, dive down to the Mariana Trench, miles beneath the ocean, all fueled by my energy bar, of course. Oh, dude, that is far out. Literally. The rich man had carefully studied his employees and knew what they could handle. While I'm gone, I'm leaving you in charge of my money. Zane, I'm sending you an encrypted key to access my gold account with 5,000 credits. Oh, excellent. Ren, 
Here's an encrypted key to access my silver account with 2,000 credits. I'm on it. Murray, check your inbox for an encrypted key to my bronze account with 1,000 credits. That's it? That's it. I'm going off the grid. Immediately, Zane accessed the money from the gold account and put that money to work. He hired scientists and designers to create a suction shoe that would keep a rock climber from falling. I call it the fly shoe. The fly shoe sold as nearly as fast as the energy bar. Zane soon made his money back and more. Ren, meanwhile, made excellent use of the money in the silver account. What does every adventurer need besides fuel and shoes? A friend. So Ren invented a robotic hamster that could travel anywhere an explorer can go, from the highest of mountains to the deepest ocean trench. Soon, robotic adventure hamsters sold as fast as toilet papers. So that left only Murray, who sat looking at the bronze account on his computer screen. Only 1,000? It's like he expects me to mess it up. Well, I'll show him, ha! So Murray took the money out in coins and stashed them in a giant bag. Then late one night, dug a hole in his backyard, stashed the bag inside, and covered it right back up. Great. Now all I have to do is go back inside and watch Netflix. After a very long time, the rich man returned from the wilds. Ah, electricity, internet. I have returned to the grid. Please accept my meeting invite. Zane and Ren hopped on the call immediately. Murray took a little longer. Start, Start your audio, Murray. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm excited to see how you've handled my money, Zane. Through sales of the fly shoe, I've added 5,000 more credits to your gold account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. Now, Ren. My adorable traveling robotic hamsters have earned 2,000 more credits for your silver account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. <laughs> so, uh, Murray. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, hold on. Murray reached down and held up a muddy sack. He spilled the coins across the desk. How? much is that? 1,000 credits. That's what I gave you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I knew you're a tough businessman. You, you make money even where you haven't worked for it. I didn't want you getting mad, so I just buried the money. See? It's, it's all safe. Murray offered a weak smile, but instead of smiling back, the rich man went red in the face. You lazy man. If you knew I can make money even when I haven't worked for it, you should have at least kept my money in the bank where it would have earned a little bit. Uh, sure. The rich man turned to his personal assistant and ordered. Take Murray's credits and give them to Zane, who already has 10,000 credits. Oh, and take Murray off my payroll immediately. The message of Jesus' story was clear. If you are responsible for what you were given, You'll be given more. If you wasted it, you end up with nothing. When Jesus told the story about the boss and the three servants, I think it was really a story about you and me. God is like the boss in the story, and we're the ones he entrusted with bags of gold. Okay, so maybe God didn't actually give you a bunch of gold, but you have definitely been given something. Each and every one of us has been uniquely created. We've been given unique talents and abilities. We use different parts of our brain. We are definitely not a diamond dozen. So it's up to us to actually use what God has trusted us with. We can't just bury it in the ground and let it go to waste. And I think it's even better if we use what he's given us to make a difference in the world, to love God and to love other people. So here's the rule for life to remember today. Make the most of what you've been given. So if you've got a talent for singing, <laughs> then sing out loud and strong. If you're good at intense thinking, then think about how you can make the world a better place. And if you happen to have 
the talent for acting like a wild animal, then let it out of its cage every once in a while, even if it makes you look silly. Did you get it? You're right. It was a zebra. See you next time. I'm kidding. It was an elephant. A really good elephant, too. I wonder what part of the brain that was. This one? This one? This one? This one? Definitely this one.